Alright, I want to do another thinking out loud video here. And, uh, this has to do again with end times apocalyptic stuff. I was thinking about some things, I was listening to some different points of view. Uh, hearing out that guy I mentioned before, Nelson Walters, about the iron being Islam. And he had a video about the little horn centered around D Daniel chapter 8. Some interesting stuff, but it got me thinking because it seemed a little bit, a little bit confusing. So I'm going to go through my thoughts here about a couple of things. Now, uh, I think I got a map over here to use. Let me see here. I guess we'll use this one. Okay, now, this guy was talking about how, in Daniel chapter 8, we heard about Greece being the he-goat, and Iran here is Persia, Medo-Persia, the ram, and how Greece comes through and destroys the two horns off of the ram. But then, after he's conquered the area here, Alexander the Great dies, and then there's four kingdoms, one to the north, uh, south, um, I guess east-west kind of thing, but I don't know which one would you say would be East West, because this up here is both North and West, so, uh, you know, outside of what I want to get into here. But he was talking about how in Daniel chapter 8, I was noticing the same thing about how that uh, it talks about this being for the end times. So, yes, this is something that happened in the past, but that's a type of something that happened in the future and seems to be near future he was saying that the little horn comes from the north and it talks about how it goes to the south and then to the east and then towards the present land and he was saying that the little horn comes up of this greece turkey area focused on turkey and that he rebuilds the islamic caliphate and I was thinking about it because the little horn comes up here. And that, you know, makes sense a bit. But would this person be accepted as a Messiah to the Jews? Would he be accepted in any way like that? Could he even try to claim to be the Messiah? We have the arrogance to go into the Jewish temple and claim to be God. You know, so it's a little bit tough seeing that, not saying it couldn't happen. But it, it's something I was taking into consideration. So I was thinking about this because I was thinking, well, you know, we're, we're, we're leaving some things out here. Right? We come over here to chapter 8. We lead about the little horn. Right? He, it wax exceedingly great toward the south and toward the east and toward the pleasant land, right? It doesn't necessarily mean he goes in that order, like south, east, and then to the present la pleasant land, right? It's just saying where he goes, right? Uh, we can take it as in that order, right? No, not, no reason not to necessarily do that, but at the same time, not to be boxed in where that has to be it. Like he could, doesn't mean he couldn't go to the east, south, then the pleasant land, or from the pleasant land to the south, east, right? And we have to take this from the point of view of that northern kingdom, right? Since if it was from the point of view of the pleasant land being Israel, then south would be completely different, right? Because right here would be Israel. And if it's talking from their point of view... South would be Egypt, Sudan, Ethiopia, right? 
but well, let's just go Egypt, and then east would be Saudi Arabia, and then towards the Pleasant Land would be Jordan. All right? So if it's from Israel's point of view, that's where he could go. All right? I'm just, like I said, thinking out loud. I'm not saying this is how things are. I'm putting this stuff out because I notice when I do videos like this and I talk to people about it, I'm able to put the pieces together a little better and I can see things more clearly. Because right now, reading it and putting it there, I'm not quite seeing it. There's all these things because this takes place before the Iron Legs, right? That's what seems to be going on because it clearly tells you uh, about the ram and the goat right in uh, here at verse, can't remember the exact verse. It tells you that this is the Medo-Persia and uh, yeah, where Gabriel actually interprets it. So that's probably here, right here. The ram that thou sawest having two horns are the kings of Medo. In Persia and the rough goat is the king of Grecia so it tells you plainly who they are right so to take it any other way you, you gotta you gotta be explaining why you do that and it has to make sense from what's being said here right now this also says it's for the time of the end but that's what gets me confused here because it talks about Grisha, Medo-Persia, right? That seems to be when Alexander does his thing. So this is before Rome, right? But at the same time, it says it's for the end, so it's something that can be repeated. And the little horn comes from here. But then, when we come to Daniel chapter 2, and we read about the iron, this iron is no doubt of Rome. It's not Islam. This is that kingdom that took over after Greece. Yeah, the kingdoms broke apart into four, and then Rome eventually grew strong and took over all the area. Right? It's no, no, no doubt Rome. They actually had the, the dominion over Israel. And I'm going to mute this just in case some things go, come popping up. But uh, the clay, I can see as a mixing in with the Muslims, right? I can see it as the Jews saying that they have no king but Caesar, so they mingle in with Iron Rome. The Christians turning the pontiff into the, the bishop of bishops, the vicar of Christ. So they mingled with Rome and Turkey being Muslim and potentially other Muslim countries joining into what I'm seeing to be NATO would be mixing in with Rome. Because a lot of people look at, uh, what is it, the UN as the reformed Rome, but it's not. Rome never stopped existing. Rome just changed its form. It broke up, right? It broke up and still had its pontiff. Because pagan Rome had the Pontifus Maximus, the title given to the emperor of Rome because he was head of the pagan church. And the head of the pagan church was the Pontifus Maximus. And now you have the pope, who's supposed to be the Christian bishop of bishops, He's the Pontifus Maximus. And not only that, he's the king of the city-state of the Vatican. And the Vatican owns Vatican City. They own the city of London, and they own Washington, D.C., supposed to be the capital of the United States, right between Maryland and Virginia, the Virgin Mary. So you, you see the connection there. Uh, so they own those cities, 
and through their Roman law, they have their government. Rome hasn't fallen, it's just changed. And not only that, when we look at NATO here, we can see the two legs because we have North America over here, right? And we have Europe over here. So we got the two legs across the pond, right? Two legs. And uh, let's take a look at the original, the founding. I think it tells you here on the key here, the darker blue is members that joined later, but the original members are the lighter blue. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's what it looks like. We have Italy, Denmark, so that would actually be 10. Norway, one. Denmark, two. Netherlands, three. Belgium, four. France, five. Italy, six. Portugal, seven. United Kingdom, eight. Canada, nine. United States, ten. So that could potentially be the ten horns. Not saying it is, thinking out loud, so don't freak out on me in the comment box. Okay? You can just tell me how that doesn't make sense and give me what you have to say. Alright? You don't have to freak out as if I'm teaching this as some kind of biblical truth, okay? But anyway, uh, I can see this as the two legs, and notice how Turkey is actually part of this. So they're part of the reformed Roman Empire, and you can see how it is turned into the feet, the feet of iron and clay, because you see that it's made up mostly of the Roman Empire, and that it actually mixing with the clay, like I said, uh, Rome, the through Catholicism, is a mixture of uh, pagan Rome with Judaism and Christianity. That's what Catholicism is, a mixture of those three. And now that is mixing with Islam. And we even had the Pope recently have uh, some kind of speech talking about Chrislam being a thing now, so we can see that that happens. The iron is mixing with the miry baked clay, as Turkey is Muslim, and they're part of this, this NATO. If where you attack one, you attack them all. So we have one big group here. But you can see there's a couple of countries in here, like Ireland and whatnot, that uh, are not actually part of it. And some of these nations are strong, some of them are weak. So you can see that this is a actually looks like a fulfillment of... Daniel 2 statue here, right? We actually can see that. So we can tell that we're definitely in the end. But you can see how this has to do with Rome, but then again, it talks about the little horn, and it comes up from the north. But if we go to a map here, like we use the UN map that it has, and yes, a flat earth map here, Israel is right here. And north is this way, right? Uh, we have Turkey, Europe, but also Canada, America. The two legs here of the Roman Empire, Europe and North America. Two legs of the Roman Empire. All of this would be north to Israel. And what's interesting to think about is that I showed a couple of kings that were taken out. We got Gaddafi, Saddam Hussein, and we had a leader of Afghanistan as America actually came in and south here into Iraq, took out Saddam Hussein, 
They went to the east, took out with Afghanistan, and then they went over, I think I show it here, towards the Pleasant Land, because Afghanistan's here, towards the Pleasant Land, over here to Libya. So part of that makes some sense. But then again, this could be something that happens later on. Because with the sixth seal, the Antichrist comes about, he comes forth to conquer, but with a bow. So I think there's a lot of contractual agreements that he does. And that he would potentially even do something going on here. Uh, England even talked about reforming the Roman Empire. And I see NATO as that. So when we look at Turkey, Turkey is part of this NATO group here. This is north. This could be considered one entity. And they could all join forces and come in and even do what uh, this guy Nelson Walters was saying. Like, come down south, go east, and then come back towards Israel, right? Very much could happen because you see what's going on with Russia and China, right? And they're trying to change the way they trade uh, oil and gas and not using the U.S. dollar. So that's going to mess things up. So now this... NATO group here, the revived Roman Empire, probably going to all unite with one new digital currency. And they're going to want to take control of the oil so that they're not going to be under Russian control anymore. So they would come through and even go through Iraq, Iran, and then come back, swoop back this way because Israel has a lot of resources for the small little area that it is and having to take care of Saudi Arabia and then they would have this huge oil field here so we can see that actually happening and basically reforming the Holy Roman Empire you could even see it this way uh, coming down through here coming down south so taking North Africa right East, so they're going to go through Iraq, Iran, even to Afghanistan again, and then back towards the present land. So both sides can sandwich this way because if they came south here and they went east here, well, then they can this way would be going east, this way would be going west, and then they could sandwich Israel by taking all these oil fields, and that would leave Israel being the harlot that's not part of NATO that's riding the beast. That's how I'm starting to see that. Because going back here to Daniel, and we're looking at Daniel 8, and we see the little horn popping up, but it's during this time that we see with the four broken up pieces of Alexander the Great's kingdom, right? This is before Rome. But when we look at Daniel 2, Rome has to do with the end times. Rome is mixed with clay. Right? And what's interesting is it says that... Uh, where does it say it right here? Where is the Salamang? Okay. They've tried to... They shall mingle themselves with the seed of men. That's something I want to come back to, but it's, it's kind of... Do, Diverting where I want to actually go with this. But we see that this has to come. This is the end. Because at this kingdom, and it says of these kings, so we see these ten toes of the ten kings, that this is when the stone cut without hands, which is Jesus, comes, smashes the statue at the feet, destroys the whole entire statue, and then establishes his, his kingdom. That's the millennial reign, right? The thousand years of peace, the thousand year Sabbath, and... But well, we come over here to Daniel chapter 7. We read about these kingdoms again, but instead of being metals, they're beasts. So the gold is a lion. The silver is a bear. The brass is a leopard. 
And then the iron is this indescribed beast because it doesn't give it a name. It just seems like this amalgamation dragon-like beast. And it's usually depicted as a dragon, even though it doesn't quite say a dragon or a reptile. But it's some weird thing. And as we see, the iron is mixed with clay. And it says some weird thing about they will mix with the seed of men. And we see something weird going on there. That definitely ties into what Jesus said about in the days of Noah. And in the days of Noah, the, the sons of God, being the angels, saw the daughters of men. And they brought forth Nephilim. So that's something that's probably going to be coming around here. But anyway, we see that Rome has to deal with this. And then when we go to Revelation, we don't see these these kingdoms being talked about. Right? These four kingdoms that are brought about, we don't see them. But we do see something interesting here. A beast that comes up with seven heads, right? And ten crowns. And it had upon his heads the name of blasphemy. This is the interesting part. It says, it was like onto a leopard, but his feet of a bear and the mouth of a lion. Okay. So, let's go to one of these maps here. Originally, Iraq is Babylon. The head of gold depicted as the lion. And Babylon used to have winged lion around its walls. So this is Babylon, right? Iraq. And they conquered Israel. Right? But then Medo-Persia, which is modern-day Iran, ended up eventually conquering Babylon. And then taking over, of course, what they had, which was Israel. And they allowed Israel to be reestablished. So here we have the lion and we have the bear. So this would be the mouth, this would be the feet. But then the main body, the Grecian Empire, is the leopard that came through and all the way to Iran and took out the kings and established the kingdoms here. And he took the kingdom of the general area around Israel and Greece ruled over Israel. That's why the uh, Bible uh, was actually written in Koine Greek because of how Alexander the Great spread the language throughout the area, right? So we see how if we take it from that point of view, then the main body would be Grecian, right? And I'm not sure how that works. What does it mean that his body is Grecian? And then its mouth is Babylonian, but its feet is Iranian, the Persian. Like, what would that mean? Right, it stands on Iran, it moves through Iran. Is that what it means? And Babylon's the mouth. It doesn't say it's the head. So Babylon, Iraq, is the language where it speaks from. And the body's Grecian. I don't, I don't get how that all fits, right? Yeah. I can't make sense of it. Right? Uh, other than the beast also represents an individual, which is weird because it talks about seven heads. So you got to understand that this beast represents a kingdom, but also the man that is ultimately the head. Right? So we got a, a lion, leopard, bear mix thing going on here. But there's been modern views of these animals here. And... For some reason, people are taking them to mean the lion is England. It had wings of an eagle. 
and was made to stand up like a man, and the w wings were plucked off. So they take that as England uses a lion to represent itself. It did have wings, and it was all over the earth. It was a vast empire where the sun didn't set on the English empire, right? But then its wings were plucked off, and they represent that as America being the eagle. It was split away, taken away from the lion. It was made to stand up on its feet, to stand as a man, so it's no longer acting like a beast. And it introduced common law to the world. And common law actually sets people free. Uh, stuff I've done videos about. And it's actually the highest law in the land. And you don't need birth certificate, social security number, ID, driver's license. But that's a whole spiel I'm not going to get into. But there, it makes a good point to show that the lion is England. And then when we look at the actual bear raised up on one side, I don't have a map of it up, but we see over here, I think this is Russia, the start of Russia right here. Off to the the right or the west. And Russia's the bear raised up on one side as most of its population more than half of it is over on its western side and over towards more of the side towards Alaska over here it is actually less densely populated so it's like oh the bear and Russia used the bear to represent itself so they make a good reference to the bear being Russia right because these things do repeat themselves. So originally Babylon, okay. And the thing is, is that um, England did end up taking the land of Israel before it became a state. That's why they were able to establish Israel as a state, because they had the, the land. Right? So we can see that potential for again being England being the lion here and the bear the bear would is a repeat and is uh would be Medo Persia right and they actually are the ones that actually put uh, the Jews back in the land and it was the Jews from Russia that actually started pushing to get the homeland. And they were trying to get more of the Jews to go there and establish a state. And they used a deal with England to bring America into the war in World War II. That if they did this, they would uh, establish the Belfort Declaration, making Israel a state. And... A lot of the Jews that went into Israel were from Russia and Germany. Uh, I think Poland, I think, were the main areas they were coming from. And uh, so we, we see a bit of a connection there as well. Now, where it says to rise up and eat much flesh, that could be what it's doing right now, starting with the Ukraine. And I think it's doing that very slowly in the way that it's actually getting America to waste money and funding trying to help out the Ukraine. I think it's using Ukraine to do that. And we also can look at England as Babylon because Babylon have this moat. Well, more, they had a gigantic wall and a big river going through it. Uh, kind of mix that up with a moat. And how the Medes were able to, and the Persians were able to conquer, is that the Babylonians figured there's nothing that could happen to them, and they were partying. And the Medes and Persians went up the river, diverted the river so that it dried up, 
and then they went under the gates of the wall and came in and conquered the place. So it was kind of like a sneaky little thing. And uh, water represents people. Like in Revelation chapter 17, it talks about the woman sitting on many waters, and it tells you that the many waters are many different peoples. So it's kind of telling you how Russia might have taken over and got some control. Excuse me, is through the people and cutting off the people. I guess the support to Babylon. And we actually kind of see that going on, right, with England and America, the, the support for the countries uh, being cut in a lot of this rise of socialism, communism. We see that coming about. Uh, so that could be it in a way. Again, just thinking out loud, just saying things as they're coming to me. Trying to put all this stuff together. Uh, but anyway, just giving you reasons why people say it's the bear is Russia. And the third beast is a leopard. And the leopard is four-headed and it has wings. I think four, uh, two sets of wings, so it had four wings, I think. So why does the leopard have four heads? Like, what is this? And again, this is a rep, seems to be a representation of originally Greece, as Greece conquered, as we mentioned, and then split up into four kingdoms, showing four heads. And then later comes up this undescript beast, which is Rome, who then takes over, right? So, uh, taking that into consideration here, how they say it played out again is through Germany. They're saying Germany is the leopard. They're saying it's a leopard because it actually did use a leopard as its symbol, but it also used this black eagle. And it's a two-headed eagle, I think, like a Roman eagle where it's looking this way and that way. So that might be where you get the four sets of wings because it's like a double bird going on. I don't know. But it acted like Greece, because what Alexander the Great did to conquer is first propaganda, where you have people go and talk about how great he is, how great his army is in the military, and how he just destroys and they waste, and he puts this fear to the people and the doubt into him, and all this psychological attack on him. And then he would just come through really fast, and by the time he even got there, a lot of their army just disbanded because of the propaganda, and then he took over. And then we see Germany do the same thing. They just did this blitzkrieg and just went into Poland, went all the way through to France. And when they went to France, they dropped all this propaganda, uh, these pamphlets with Notre Dame predictions, talking about this guy Hister coming and was going to just destroy them or whatever. So they just surrendered. So that was easy work for Germany, right? The Blitzkrieg. So why the four heads? Well, Hitler was actually the Third Reich, the third head. So they were saying there's going to be a fourth one. Potential, right? Could happen. Uh, so we can see why they are applying it to modern days. I don't I don't know why they did this with Daniel 7. I'm just bringing it up to think about it, to see how it applies, right? Applying this thing where Islam and the Antichrist thing going on and uh, uh, Rome and also with this Daniel 7 thing going on. But like I was saying, when we go to Revelation, we don't see the four kingdoms there. And the little horn coming up, we see that the, the beast, the seven-headed beast, which is made up of the leopard, bear, and lion, which is why I was bringing up Russia, England, and Germany, 
Because if we go, I don't think I got a map up for this, but we got Russia, Germany, England. That that weird mix, right? Like these countries are coming together. Uh, so when I think about this and trying to actually paint the picture using countries about what this beast is, this might be more about the lineage of the actual Antichrist. And I'll explain. All right, so if we take it as Iraq is the mouth, the lion, Iran is the bear, the feet, being Persia here, Greece being the leopard, so they're the body. Well, then it's telling you that this person would be Greek. Somehow they move through Iran or something. And that they speak Iraqi. Right? That, that's kind of how you would take this. Some, for some reason, people are switching Greece with Turkey here. Not sure exactly why. Uh, maybe they're intertwined somehow that I don't, I'm not, I don't realize, but uh, yeah, I think Greece is Orthodox and Turkey is Muslim. So I'm not sure why they're connecting these two and just basically putting Turkey in place of Greece. I don't know. I'm sure they got a reason. I just don't know what it is. Uh, but anyway, but if we take it and apply it with England, Germany, and Russia, we can take it as this guy is a German body, since this is the leopard, speak English, since this is the lion, but then moves through Russia, right? The feet of a bear moves through Russia or something like that. And this is why I was looking a lot at uh, Donald Trump. His ancestry is from Germany, so his body is German, but he speaks English. And the royal family of England is from Germany as well. Strange little tidbit there. And Donald Trump is related to the monarchy of England. And Donald Trump seems to be moving through Russia. And you'd be saying, how? That's Well, I think Russia is doing what it's doing with the Ukraine to help Trump look good and Biden to look bad. I think he's made deals with Russia, and there might be something along those lines. Uh, just again, thinking out loud. That's why I was look, really looking at this, because to the north, a lot of people put Turkey, right? And I was like, well, that's part of NATO. This is that revived Roman Empire people are talking about, right? Partly strong, partly weak, partly iron, partly clay. <clears throat> and we saw the test run for a, a jibber-jabber that they inject into you. Uh, that's just a test run for this actual thing that's coming out because they do want to mingle with the seed of men. And uh, that's the strange thing that's got me really looking at this Trump is this QAnon stuff. I don't have it up here. Maybe I pick one of these things. I'll just take this and put QAnon just to have it up here. And... These people are interesting because they're saying that, let's see what just pops up if I put it in, but they are uh, saying that Trump is friends with the aliens, with these Palladians, and that they got this technology that can cure all diseases and illnesses and can slow down the aging and all this stuff. I did like miracle stuff. 
But of course, Donald Trump has to be in office, so they're not going to get all this stuff. So let's just see what comes up here. Palladians. I'm not sure how to spell that, to be honest. Palladians. I'm going to put this, hopefully, spell checks me here. Paladin. Well, I probably spelled that wrong. Oh, here we go. See right here. Oh, it is right. So yeah, see they they these they call them like Nordics, tall, blonde aliens, and they got these technologies that they're going to give to Trump. This might talk about it right here. Uh, strange conspiracies, and not only that, they use this weird Keck thing, Keck magic, to help. Trump get in office and the Antichrist, like we read here, he understands dark sentences and does causes craft to prosper. And we actually see that here with Keck, and they use Keck magic. I think Jordan Peterson even talked about them using Pepe and Keck magic, this weird stuff. I don't know if he believed in it, but he was talking about how they were doing this stuff. Um. But let's look at here. There's also the Saint Germain fund. And this is supposed to have enough money to pay off the whole world's debt. Again, you need Trump in office for this to uh, be given out to everybody. But you can look this thing up as well. This is something very strange. Maybe take out the QAnon thing for more detail on it because a lot of this stuff seems to be off. Uh, but anyway, uh, what was this other thing? They, they were talking like Trump is like Saint Germain reincarnated. Uh, what was this other thing QAnon was doing? I'll just put it up here. Alien technology. All right, see here, QAnon followers now convinced UFOs are being used to distract from something. Uh, but there's these QAnons talking about these technologies. Uh, again, strange stuff. Maybe there's nothing to it. They're just crazy, right? Just crazy. But if there's something to it, like they're doing this weird kick magic and he got elected and he and it was Trump Pence, kind of like giving you a warning, right? Trumpets, Trump Pence. And when he got elected, the, da uh, the I don't know, like within the first year, the Dow dropped 666 points. And when he won the... I think it was the Republican nomination. It was with 666 votes, however they do their little thing, nominations or what have you. I'm not quite sure what that was, but you see a lot of that connection there. It gets you to go, okay, this is strange. I'm going to pay attention. I'm going to pay attention. And, uh, yeah, so with this alien stuff and the technologies and the St. Germain fund. This sounds like Mark of the Beast stuff to me. That's what it sounds like. And it sounds like the the seed of them mixing with the seed of men, but they're not going to cleave one to another. Right? So it's going to cause some kind of issue with these people who take the mark. Something bad's going to happen to them because they're it, it not most to mix. So you get probably a lot of weird deformities. Uh, but anyway, I guess I'll start wrapping this up a bit here. But I was, I was looking at this stuff, trying to put this together because the way this guy was talking about Daniel chapter 8, and this is end again with the end times. 
the way he's looking at it and basically having Turkey as the king of the north coming south going east and then coming towards the promised land I was like there could be some truth to that in that NATO all joins as one so if Iran did something and it actually threatened Turkey well then you had the whole NATO force come through you just gave excuse to allow them to come in and take the oil fields right and uh Yeah, this is uh, something interesting. I can't quite put all this together. I'm just trying to think about these things because I know the rapture is pretty soon. Uh, and then just to look even more crazy, it could be actually in the next day or so. Well, apparently last night, Israel sounded the trumpet for uh, so the spotting of the new moon. So it's Rosh Hashanah. And that means they'll be doing their trumpets for today and then tomorrow. And the last trump will be before sunset Israel time. And I think sunset for them is between 7, 8 o'clock-ish right now, their time. So over here on the East Coast, that would be something like between... One and two o'clock in the afternoon. So I think they're about seven hours ahead of the East Coast of the United States. Might be six, might be eight. So it's somewhere between noon and two o'clock would be the last Trump before, if they do it right before sunset, Israel time. And you, hopefully that's enough information for you to know where you are what time that would be uh, that could actually be the rapture not sure if it is I'm going to be watching waiting and if not maybe next year right but uh, I figured since we could be gone I want to know as much information as I can to pass on to those who stay here so that's what I was doing here, and that's about that. I, I I went through I think everything I wanted to go through. All right, just had all this stuff up. Didn't really need to get into all those, but yeah, that that that's that. Just thinking out loud. I hopefully it's something useful to somebody. But anyway, that thanks for watching. Take care.